Who's ready for Demetrius Pun Party 2K22? What do you call an elephant mixed with a rhino? Elephino? What did the beavers say after leaving a tree? It was nice gnawing you. What do you call annoying orange video games? Reality. And that is when the party ends. <laughs> are now watching the beach I'm sure many of you are aware that YouTube as a whole has become kind of stagnant this is especially noticeable if you started watching YouTube at any time during the 2000s or early 2010s at first it was videos that went viral these videos have become memorable but usually the creator of the video would almost always end up being a one-hit wonder but one day one man single-handedly was the first to bring in one million subscribers. Someone with a highly sophisticated sense of wit and a filmmaking prodigy. Hey, it's Fred! And it's really nice out, so I think I'm gonna go swimming later. My mom found this really cool pool at the dump. It was Fred. Looking back, the videos are obnoxious to put them lightly. I have choice words to describe how I feel about the Fred videos, all seven of them. But if anything, Fred was the start of not just videos going viral, but the creators as well. One of the channels that was fresh and ripe at one point was the Annoying Orange. The creator Danbo is extremely talented, and he was the first channel to incorporate really cool special effects into his videos. One of the things he was known for was making foods talk. Videos like Screaming Eggs and Terrified Corn Cobs were YouTube classics. What started off as what Danbo thought would be a one-trick pony turned out to put bread with orange marmalade on the table for him. Hey, hey handball, can you blow bubbles with your spit? No. Like this, watch. I'm very nostalgic towards the 2000s and early 2010s. Unfortunately, I spent under a month in the 90s and I can't remember any of it. I miss a lot of things from these eras. Logos that took effort to make, Wii Sports with all the sports at launch and Miis, controllers that don't drift, cereal straws, it was a good time to be alive. But there is one thing from that era I don't miss in the slightest. After Fred's popularity, it was common for YouTubers to turn into a multimedia franchise. We had the awful Fred show on Nickelodeon along with three awful movies. Cartoon Network saw potential in this idea and introduced the high fructose adventures of Annoying Orange. It actually lasted for two seasons, which was surprising. But along with that, there are, and I kid you not, Annoying Orange video games. Talk about juicing something till the last drop. There are not one, but two Annoying Orange video games. One of them I played in its heyday, and the other I found out about many years later. These games were not released on consoles or even handhelds. I wouldn't be too surprised if the DS got an Annoying Orange game, because it has a Silly Vans game, so why not? These games released for mobile devices, with one releasing in 2011, and the other in 2014. The first game is Annoying Orange Kitchen Carnage. This is a game I remember playing on my iPod Touch 4th generation. I dare you to come up with a more early 2010 sentence than that. Unfortunately, it no longer works. I haven't owned an Apple product since then, but thankfully or unthankfully, it's on Android. It's the exact same game I remember playing many moons ago. Annoying Orange Kitchen Carnage is essentially a sick and twisted version of Skee-Ball. If you like playing as a villain, this is a game you can add to the list. Mr. Orange himself will often make jokes and commentate on what's going on instead of, you know, saving the fruits? What a guy. I guess he'd be the accomplice. We don't need another OJ. Some likely thought you'd play as a citric cretin himself, and they ended up being disappointed. They were probably disappointments to their parents anyway, so it hardly matters. You can play three different modes in the game. The first mode is your standard arcade style mode. Aim for a high score, and make sure the time doesn't run out. You can get extra time by leveling up, or throwing fruit into cabinets with some of Mr. Orange's buddies. I think that's the only character in the show we all wanted a good ending for. You throw different fruit into a blender as you progress. And then baseballs. But as the rule goes about progressing fruit in gaming, apparently pretzels are fruit as well. There is a corn cob in the game, but corn is a starch. Each fruit has different physics, so you'll have to throw all of them differently. You can actually get more points by hitting the star fruits on the balloons into a blender, 
throwing fruits onto the cutting board, using the microwave after collecting three radioactive limes, and throwing the occasional raspberry successfully to their doom. Why I say it's like skee-ball is because you get more points throwing fruits into blenders further away. The second mode is a balloon mode. Seems all good games have a secondary balloon mode. You throw starfruit like shurikens and pop balloons, so it becomes more like duck hunt than skee-ball. It's fun, but I found the fast-paced original mode to be more enjoyable. Finally, there's the endless mode. It's just like the first one, but untimed. So theoretically, if you hooked up your phone to a power outlet and never slept, you could play this game for the rest of your life. It's good for practicing throwing fruits, but this is a game I don't want to marathon. You might think the game is going to be trash, but surprisingly, this is a really fun game. Mobile games aren't meant to be in-depth experiences, and Kitchen Carnage serves its goal of being fun to play to pass some time. The game looks quite nice too. It keeps true to the look of the annoying orange videos. Even though the game says annoying in the title, the game shockingly is not. The fruits scream, but you can mute them. This is especially useful when you find out the corn cob is voiced by Fred Figglehorn. Not only that, it was released during a time where free-to-play games weren't really a thing. It was $1 when it initially released, and the only way it's monetized here is with ads. You don't need a constant internet connection either. No loot boxes, no $40 pink gold peach, just an obnoxious orange and a great way to pass some time. What's also stunning is that this game was brought back to work on modern devices. Yes, Mr. Orange cares more about gaming preservation than the richest company in Japan. Annoying Orange 1, Nintendo, 0. Speaking of Japan, you might be surprised to find out the most popular sport is baseball there. Leading us into the next game, Annoying Orange, Splatter Up. Developed by Eastgate Studios, who also developed Kitchen Carnage, this is an evolution of that game. You play it in landscape mode instead of portrait mode, and the main difference here is that instead of being a sick and twisted version of skee-ball, it's a sick and twisted version of baseball. More specifically, it's a deranged version of Smash's home run mode. The main goal is to hit fruit the farthest distance to get more points. You can also get points by having the fruit land in blenders or even hot cocoa mugs. Mr. Orange is back with the commentary once again, but this time, I got some genuine laughs. This one was so stupid that it made me laugh hysterically. You get an A for effort and an N for na 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 Unfortunately, you will see some microtransactions, but ones that are more tame, such as paying to continue instead of getting a game over. Nothing truly anti-consumer. The presentation is much better than it was in Kitchen Carnage, and it can actually get quite violent. If there's a vegan equivalent to not eating fruit, I might go in that direction after playing this game. I will say with all the annoying orange merch in the background, somebody probably has a bit of an ego. But just like Kitchen Carnage, it's a fun little game that serves as a good way to pass some time. So far we've established Annoying Orange Kitchen Carnage and Splatter Up are a bit mindless, but fun to play. If you're looking for fun little games to pass some time, these certainly will cut it. So what's the verdict? Shockingly, the Annoying Orange games are actually pretty good. They're faithful to the source material and look quite good too. It's also nice that the annoyances are only limited to the orange himself. It's very easy to make mobile games infuriating with aggressive microtransactions, but Mr. Orange is more concerned about making puns than teaching gambling. Annoying Orange Kitchen Carnage is my favorite of the two, but both games get the ranking of treasure. These games are free, so if you're interested in playing them and taking a break from reading gothic literature and emailing your professor that you want to do extra homework, these are fun games to pass some time. So what do you guys think? Do you now have a fascination with annoying orange games and are gonna play them now? Anyways, thanks for watching and keep calm and on.